Hi, I'm Jesse Skinner, and today I'm going to talk about how to get started with Svelte. Now, many of you have probably heard about Svelte, maybe you've never used it, and you're wondering how to actually get started, how to learn about Svelte, and how to even start programming with Svelte on your local computer. Now, first thing you might do, which is a good idea, is come to the Svelte website, which you can get to at svelte.dev. And when you get there, uh, the first thing I'm going to point you to are these links at the top. Tutorial, API, Examples, and REPL. And if, you, if you're new to programming generally or you're, you um, just want to sort of see the basics of Svelte, I recommend checking out the tutorial first. The tutorial is really nice. It has a, an editor built in right here. This is the REPL. And it includes the output. So whatever we type in here, Hello YouTube, it's going to show up there. On the left hand side will be some instructions to guide you through this. And when you get to the end you can click next. And each step of the tutorial is going to have a different code example. And basically the structure is that they show you a before and then they ask you to make some changes to the code to demonstrate a feature. For example, here they're demonstrating variables. Here's a variable called name. And to use it in our code, we would put that there. And finally, they say, try changing name to name to uppercase. So it's a lot of copying and pasting. Uh, just to, just to uh, bring you close to the code and ha give you a chance to work through how some of these things actually work. And of course, you can deviate from the tutorial at any time and, you know, again, make changes that you like and, and play around with it that way. Uh, if you're coming from a background where you've already been doing a lot of React or Angular, Vue, and maybe you don't, maybe you're feeling a bit comfortable, you want to kind of dive in the deep end, you can check out the API. So the API is really the docs. The URL there is svelte.dev slash docs. And this is where I turn when I have a question. I just want to see, you know, the documentation. If you just want to jump into the documentation, you can you can read through the uh, the docs. Actually, quite good. And on the left hand side, of course, there are links you can jump down. This is actually just a one giant long web page. The tutorial is split up into separate pages. Uh, the docs are just one giant page. So if you want to see the definition, how to use promises in your rendering. You can jump down to the await clause or whatever it is. So There's a lot in here, and I haven't had time to read all of it. I'm still exploring. Uh, I find the, the docs and the tutorial make a good pairing. So there's actually some topics that the tutorial covers that are not... See, the docs just get to the specifics of the feature, but the tutorial has more writing. So it, it talks more about the philosophy behind the feature, things like that. And in this drop down here, you can there's a quite a complete list of of uh, features that are organized. So between the tutorial and the API, you can really get a good grasp on whatever feature it is you're you're trying to learn. Now you might also learn well with examples. So there's a, a separate example section. In there, there's no text to tell you much about anything, uh, but there are quite a few simple examples that and some complex examples. So if you're trying to do something specific, like if you're dealing with checkboxes, you might jump in here and see what what an example of using checkboxes. So you might learn, oh, here's a, here's a checkbox, and they're binding checked to yes with a variable. And that lets us change the text when it's checked or unchecked. So there's some good examples in here. Uh, if you scroll down, there's some 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 really neat stuff. So under SVG, I really like Svelte's use of how Svelte can integrate with SVG. It actually does server-side, it could support server-side rendering. So what, what you do with Svelte, what you can do, is actually render an SVG inline and then use, you know, a library such as D3 Scale. I actually used this example in, uh, in production for a client. And I did I did not expect that you could do it this way, where 
you're using D3 scale to cal help you calculate where the dots go, where the lines go for the axes, and where the numbers go and everything. But then it ends up being just, there's no real JavaScript in the rendering. It's just rendering circles in an SVG. So I think that's really powerful, a really cool example. If we scroll down to some of the other examples, uh, modal, you might want to modal on your page. Here, here's an example of how you might do that with Svelte. So showing you the uh, interactions to hit escape, to make it go away, things like that, how you might do that. So the examples are really good because they, they bring together a lot of features all at once. And uh, I've definitely learned about things or discovered things I didn't know were possible by looking at the examples. Uh, and at the very bottom under miscellaneous, there's some even quite more complex examples. Here's Hacker News. Uh, and here you can see an example of a simple, what they call the poor man's router. How to, how to use the hash change event to do some routing. Um, and there's also some data fetching. So in here we're doing a, a fetch of, I assume, the Hacker News API. Uh, so we're pulling in an item. So when you click a comments link, it's doing a fetch, and then we assign the result to this item. And once that loads, we render the item. Uh, so once you've played with the tutorial a bit, you've worked on, you've looked at some examples, you've read the docs, and you, you kind of just want to play around, uh, there's the REPL itself. So the REPL is, is like a code sandbox or a JS bin type editor. Uh, you can come in here and make some changes and just the same thing we saw in the tutorial. Uh, but from here, you can actually log into the website. You can create an account and you can save your work and share a link with somebody. So if you want to show someone, hey, check out this thing I made, you can do that. And you can even do multiple files. You can hit the plus up here and create a, a child component. And I don't know what we'll do in here, but hello, I am a child component, let's say. And then you can Im import that into your parent component and use it. So, and there we see our child component. Now let's say you, you play around in here a bit. I use this to, to test ideas, to double check how Svelte works. If I'm getting into the nitty gritty, I might be unclear what the actual behavior is. I might use the REPL to double check that uh, it works the way I think it does. Uh, but I think it's also a nice way to get started if you're doing a new interface, a new component. Uh, you can get started building out some files and actual, actually make a prototype right on the Svelte website. And then you might think, oh, that's kind of silly because how are you going to get these out of here? Are you going to have to copy paste? Well. Svelte actually makes it really easy to go from using the REPL to using code on your hard drive. And if you see up here, there's this little download file link, download zip file. If we click that, we're going to get a zip file into our downloads folder. And I already have the downloads folder here, so I'm going to unzip that. And that gives us a folder. So I have VS Code open. And this is what we get inside our zip file. We get the app code that we saw, the child component that I've created, and we also get a main JS, which I didn't make, which is the, the glue, I guess, that brings the Svelte component mounted on the page. We also get a roll-up um, build process in here. So if we go into the Svelte app folder, we're going to need to do npm install. That'll pull in all the, all the dependencies we need for the build process, the Svelte runtime, all that stuff. Once that's done, we can do npm run dev. That's going to give us a running web server. And we're going to be able to open that up in our browser and see our component running. And what's nice is it's, all, it's already all configured. So if I go into, let's say, the child component and add some more text, nice to meet you, and save that. Before I even get to the browser, it's already refreshed with my changes. So this is a really great way to get started, you know, to to start just playing around on the website. And now we're actually editing code on our computer. Um, so I hope I've shown you uh, how you can get started 
if you have more questions about if you get stuck there's also the discord uh, there's this little link up here it looks like a chat box in the top right of the website uh, if you click that, that's going to be a Discord invite. And in there, there's quite a good community of people willing to help you answer your questions about Svelte. I'm in there too sometimes. So maybe I'll see you in there. And really appreciate you watching. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.